Hi, this is Pastor Jerry Maynard II of Cathedral of Praise here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm so glad you've joined us for our series of the Fruits of the Spirit. It is my honor to just share with you a word of God in our series on the Fruits of the Spirit. And as we talk about Paul and his writing in Galatians, it's important that we really start from the beginning of this one major debate within the kingdom of God. And that is, what does it mean to live holy? What does it mean to live godly? This debate has raged on since the beginning of the children of Israel when Abraham decided to follow God and his order to say, I'll go where you tell me to go, even though I don't know where you're taking me. It was that faith. And since then, we've been debating what it means to be holy. Some people have said holiness is a lifestyle. You've heard that before. I've heard that before. What does that mean? Well, Paul is dealing with this very issue in Galatians. At the church of Galatia, Paul is preaching and teaching and reaching out to non-Jews, what we call Gentiles, to win them over to Christ to tell them about the story of Jesus Christ, the power of love, the power of being born, not of the flesh, but of the spirit of God in Mary's womb, being born to die just for you and I. Paul thought of this as a gift from God, his son and his son giving his life, and that this gift cannot be earned. Paul went to the Gentiles, teaching them that the gift of salvation cannot be bought, it cannot be earned, it is given freely by God giving his only begotten son and his only begotten son giving of his life. So that salvation then is free if you believe. However, there were certain Jews who were teaching that you cannot be a believer in Jesus Christ, you cannot be saved, salvaged, you cannot live holy or godly unless you comply with Judaism. That Judaism, that is the practice of Judaism, that is the Ten Commandments, that is the areas of tradition and customs and culture, the do's and the don'ts, what you cannot do, what you can do, lifestyle, that that dictates your holiness. Paul had a major, major problem with that. Paul said, wait a minute, salvation is a gift from God, and it does not matter whether you practice Judaism or not. Salvation is when you accept that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and that when you appreciate that when Jesus gave of his life, and when he shed his blood, we are saved by grace. We are saved by faith. We are saved by God's mercy when he sent his only begotten son. So Paul has a, a dilemma. He's establishing churches all over in Turkey and in Jerusalem and all over. And he is reaching out to Jews and non-Jews. So imagine that he was in Nashville, Tennessee. And Paul came to Nashville and said, I want to establish a church. And our church is based upon this principle that Jesus Christ came to this earth, not born of flesh, but born by the Holy Spirit of God, gave his life, sacrificed his life, took upon our sins unto himself, died and rose again that we now may be saved. And imagine someone says, well, yeah, you may be saved if you think you're saved, but you need to comply with all these fundamental principles and precepts and rules and traditions and customs. Now you know what Paul was going through. So we find ourselves in Galatians chapter five, where Paul is dealing with, what does it mean to be godly? Do you have to be Jewish and receive Christ? Or can you receive Christ without being Jewish? One of the great examples is the cutting of the foreskin, being circumcised. Non-Jews were not circumcised. A lot of Jews who now believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, the Messiah, they believe that you had to be circumcised. But not only that, but you had to comply with all the Judaism rules, customs, 
and all of those different things. Paul comes and says, I've got a different measure. I've got a different standard by which we know whether you're godly. And he proposes these two things. Flesh, when you're born of your flesh, you are not a good person. Your flesh will lead you to wickedness. He talked about flesh being leading to orgies, sexual immorality, selfishness, meanness, hatred, jealousy, all of those things. He says, that's your flesh. But when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're now led by the spirit, the spirit of God. Now you know where we're going. Flesh is your individual. I'm born. I, I, I do what I want to do. I lead my life according to my mind. I lead my life according to what I want to do. It's my will. It's my way. Period. He says, that's not godly. However, when you're led by the spirit of God or the Holy Ghost, that's godly. So then he begins to teach the church in Galatia, what we find in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 24. How do I know that you're living by the spirit of God and not by your flesh? I know that you're living a holy life, a godly life by the fruits of the spirit. Not whether you're circumcised, not whether you're Jew or non-Jew, not whether you were born of Judaism or not Judaism, not whether you carry out the precepts of Judaism, but I know that you're godly according to what? The fruits of the spirit. And what are those? Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We're going to be talking about every one of these aspects of the fruit of the spirit. In other words, we know that you are godly if you have these remnants of the Holy Spirit. If we show that through our actions, through our, 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 our plans of life, through our walk in life, if we show these attributes we know that we are holy. We know that we're living godly. That's the purpose of the fruits of the spirit. So join me for part two when we come back to you the next time to talk about the fruits of the spirit in Galatians chapter five. Be blessed.